This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Welcome to rounds 11 and 12 of the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. We're back at Silverstone and you're joining me here from the wing in the paddock on the international circuit. Mark Sumter has regained the overall championship lead after his dominant performance at Donington with a double pole position and race victories. Jonathan Evans has moved down to second but will sure be fighting back this afternoon. <laughs> Porsche Club Championship has never been to the international circuit at Silverstone, so qualifying was the first time out for many drivers. I'm here with Pete Morris. Pete, how did your qualifying go this morning? I could have done better, but it's a, coming onto the back straight for the S's. I haven't done that part of the circuit before, so it's tricky, very bumpy, and I was losing time out to the guys that had a bit more practice yesterday. The fifth will be all right. My teammates pushing me hard. The car's still a little bit heavy at 1,500 kilos, but we're getting there. Mike, you had a fantastic outing at Donington with a podium. How have you set yourself up for Silverstone today? I'm going to make harder work of it for myself today. Yeah, Donington was, uh, was a super outing, uh, not just the end podium at the manor in getting the overtaking, but that's behind me now. We look at what we've got today. Uh, P6 is disappointing. It's incredibly tight, uh, but it's going to be very tasty out there, I think, because some of the quality pace uh, was fast, so the race pace, I think it could be quite lively out there. The smile is still evident uh, after Donington, your double podium, a class two victory. It's sunny here at Silverstone. How are you feeling towards race one? Uh, great. It's, uh, we tested yesterday and the weather wasn't so good, but today I couldn't ask for a better day. It's, it's fabulous conditions and um, it, it's, it's gone okay this morning. Uh, grid, grid position, not the best for race one, but better for race two. Um, and there's only about uh, half a second between five of us in the class, so it's going to be a really good tussle, I think. Mark, we are waiting for your new 997 to come out, but until then, you've had a fantastic qualifying uh, here at Silverstone. How did it go for you? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, the 997's got quite a lot to live up to with this car, really, because, you know, we've got it to where it's working really well. Um, so, obviously, we're not going to rush it out. We'll, um, once, it's, once it's ready and it's quick enough, that's when we'll use it. You know, it should be a good clean race, hopefully. Um, I think the times between myself, and Mark and uh, Sam and Clark are, are all relatively close. So, yeah, I think the top three is going uh, to be a real squabble. But, yeah, ultimately, we're going for a win. Simon, you've had a brilliant qualifying. You've got two third positions to race from today. Uh, Chris Dyer is next to you, so starting in row two, also in a Cayman. So, if not going forwards, just to finish first? Yeah, so I need to beat him, basically. And, and it's a shame, in a sense. He's actually done himself a favour qualifying behind because the grid here is around the opposite way to you'd expect. So, pole's actually on the outside of the corner rather than the inside. So, although I'm starting third, it feels like I'm starting fourth. So, that's going to be a challenge today, definitely. <laughs> Paul, welcome back. You had a bit of a disaster at Snetterton where you had to sit out, but with a smile on your face, are you looking forward to racing at Silverstone today? Yes, fantastic. We had a pretty good qualifying. I was happy with the pace and uh, hopefully the car will hold together and we can just enjoy some racing, be back, you know. So close between all of us though, so it will be competitive, so yeah. We're all set for a thrilling race one here at Silverstone, so let's see how they get on. I'm handing over to Richard in the commentary to run you through the grid. Thank you, Leah. Mark Sumter on pole. Mark McAleer is alongside. Row two, Simon Clark and Chris Dyer. Then Pete Morris and Michael Price. Fourth row, Andy Toon and Jonathan Evans, who leads class two. Second in class two, Angus Archer from Natalie McGloin. Then Andrew Muggeridge and Paul Seagrave. Steve Freeman, Ed Grimshaw, Del Brett and Stuart Ings in class four complete the grid. 
Lights out here at Silverstone. The two marks on the front row of the grid. The light blue 77 of championship leader Mark Sumter on pole gets away well. And he's going to sweep round to the outside line. And Chris Dyer, I think, has made contact with him. There's a bit of bodywork on the track. Sumter is spun around on the first turn. Pete Morris gets a view of his teammate who's off the circuit there, left of shot. Shot's gone now before, by the time I got to say anything about it. Morris challenging for second. Simon Clark second. Superb start by Jonathan Evans, who is running in fourth. Read the traffic well, so Jonathan Evans, the class two pole position man, is up there. Angus Archer behind Michael Price, who was second overall at Donington last time. So Angus Archer, welcome back to him. Didn't see him in the coverage at Donington, although he was there. We'll talk more about that anon because there is Chris Dyer slowly recovering. If you look back along the straight, Stuart Ings in the golf livery at the back, side by side with Mark Sumter, who is still running, but what we don't know, is whether Mark is trundling around back to, to go into pit lane. So uh, hopefully Mark might be able to get going and, and make some ground. But this potentially one of his drop scores. He'll, he'll score 11 points for this, as he did on the GP circuit here back on the 2nd of June. And they, at the moment, will be his drop scores. Michael Price in green shapes up to try and pass Jonathan Evans, the lead Class 2 car. Behind Jonathan now is the white and blue Class 2 machine of Angus Archer, but Michael Price makes that move neatly, as you would expect. Class 1 car powering past as we ride with Natalie McLoy, the only female tetraplegic racing driver in the world. Ambassador for Dare to be Different as well. Absolute inspiration to everybody. Quite a character too is Natalie, and running well with the Class 2 cars at the moment. Third meeting of the year for Natalie as we pick up again with Jonathan Evans, the Class 2 championship leader looking to put Donington Park behind him, the second Donington of the year. The only meeting that we've been to this year, he hasn't taken a win, did take a P2 in second in the second race, but was out of luck. Leads the championship by 78 points from Steve Freeman with Andrew Muggeridge third, Ed Grimshaw fourth in Class 2, then Trevor Lewis, who's not here this weekend. Paul Seagrave is next in the uh, Class 2 standings from Angus Archer and Del Brett. There is Steve Freeman, he's been very fast and consistent this year. On drop scores, I think probably third in the standings, but that's all subject to official confirmation as we watch Natalie giving chase to the leading Class 2 cars at the moment, across the line, ticking off another lap. Angus Archer coming towards us in the 70 car. Then Andrew Muggeridge, third in class at the moment. So Andrew here, he's got a nine-point gap to close up on Steve Freeman in terms of the total points scored. So he's got the... Uh, he'll want to overcome the total score as well, as well, of course, as doing it on drop scores. But drop scores do afford you a little bit of a chance to have some bad luck. Or more importantly, if you've got business commitments to drop one of the weekends, because this is, by definition, club racing. The... Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. So drop scores, I know, are contentious at top line championships, but in club racing, of course, absolutely fine and proper that you should have the opportunity to drop around, whether it's business or bad fortune. Somebody having good fortune at the moment is Simon Clark, second place, and up ahead of him, Mark McAleer, who started the defence of his championship at Donington Park in April with two retirements. Couldn't have been worse, could it, for him? And Mark's worked his way through the championship and uh, worked really hard to just keep scoring points, which he's done. And now he's got himself up to fourth place in the championship. Simon Clark second, Chris Dyer is third. And that probably won't change here. McAleer on 239 points, Chris Dyer on 268. But this will allow Simon Clark to pull clear of Chris Dyer in the championship standings. Certainly Mark Sumter on 3-2-9 points. Mark Sumter, incidentally, the overall championship leader on 3-2-9 because the champion outright can come from Class 1 or Class 2. Here is Steve Freeman once again. Steve, three podia so far this year for him. Super year, been an absolute pleasure to watch him racing this year. Coming towards us is Andrew Muggeridge, his main rival, nearest rival in the championship with Natalie McGloin in behind. 
Last year's uh, outright champion, of course, was Mark McAleer. He was Class 1 champion the year before, but Andy Toon was outright champion in 2016. Last year's Class, champ class 2 champion, you might remember, Jake McAleer. We had a historic year with McAleer's winning both classes. Now, I was talking earlier on about Ed Grimshaw, and Ed is there, up ahead of Del Brett. Ed fourth in the championship, Del Brett is eighth at the moment. And uh, a good battle going on between those. We've got a Strasse pairing coming towards us. Pete Morris, who is under pressure from, well, not really under pressure from Andy Toon, ahead of Andy Toon, and then Michael Price. And these two battling it out for podium position. So Pete Morris, this is the part of the track that he said he wasn't that keen on or hadn't got fully sussed out. Peter, the first driver in the Strasser team to have the 997, so really trailblazing for the others, doing all the development work for him. I hope they're, hope they're grateful for that. As you can see, Simon Clark still in second place, chasing Mark McLear, not that far behind. And then the three cars on for a podium battle at the moment. Andy Toon in fourth place. This is Andy Toon, don't want to talk too soon, but Andy Toon potentially on for a best result of the year here. And, and indeed, I think, best result in Class 1. Angus Archer comes towards us. Angus coming under pressure from Andrew Muggeridge. This for second position in Class 2. Angus, who was at Donington, but if you're thinking, hang on, I didn't see him in the coverage. It's because he was poorly. The car didn't get off the trailer, but hopefully he made a full recovery. And looking pretty sharp here with second place. A very useful addition to the championship this year and has already graced the podium and looks like he's in a position to do so once again having a, a good old scrap with Andrew Muggeridge who's up front at the moment and running second in class in the Uber GT entered car with Natalie McGloin in behind in the Cayman S and Natalie putting these two under pressure won't interfere with the battle will Natalie but will want to try and get past if she can Angus Archer not too far away I say hasn't quite had as much racing as Andrew Muggridge this year but um, still looking good value in this one I'm just checking the gap back behind them we can't see the cars that are behind here as round 11 continues Michael Price piling the pressure on Andy Toon having caught him so about to embark on Hangar Straight. And this is as good a place as any if you've got the speed, if you've got the run to try and make the manoeuvre. And he's trying the outside line. It's going to be the outside for Stowe. So is he going to cede this to Andy Toon? Andy's giving him room. Michael Price pulled off a great move at Donington. And he's doing the same here around the outside line at Stowe Corner. We've got to say hats off to Andy Toon for fair racing there on the inside. Could have taken him out wide but didn't. There's the race leader going out of shot. Simon Clark second. Third place is Pete Morris. And Michael Price up into fourth. Wonderful racing from that pair. Really good clean. A super move around the outside by Michael Price, who really is coming into form, I think, at this stage of the season. Better late than never, they say. And that's very definitely the case in our Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Jonathan Evans, he leads class two. Decent points lead, he's going to extend that now. Good battle again, or still I should say, with Ed Grimshaw in the Strasse Boxster up ahead of Del Brett. And Del on the outside line, so Grimshaw should have the run down into the S's here. And indeed he does, so Del's got to try and work out where he can have the pace to make the move and if he gets a decent run through the complex leading on Tanger Strait might be able to make a move there up ahead of them is Steve Freeman Steve running in fifth place in class Ed Grimshaw currently in sixth Del Brett seventh in class and Jonathan Evans still leading class and pretty much on his own at the moment and we stick with this battle between these two with Del Brett working hard there is the top of the class leader we go back we have a look at Jonathan Evans who up until round seven had a perfect run six wins on the bounce in class for Jonathan Evans 
hence the championship lead. But then, his, uh, would you count his worst meeting as Donington where he had the non-finish or fourth of the year? Probably Donington, the last meeting that, that we had as Del Brett still looking to try and get past Ed Grimshaw. But uh, a little bit of a gap back now between those two. So Del's going to have to try and work out where he can close up. Seems to be quick through Stowe on the run down here. Is he going to find a gap on the inside? Is he going to be close enough? The answer to that question is no. So sixth and seventh in class remain as they are. But Dell's now getting a bit of a run out of the chicane. Gets his nose in front as they go across the line and just, I think, tags the front end of the 71 car. It was very well held there by Ed Grimshaw. And he's got that to deal with. Plus, Mark McAleer coming through as well. So the leader now having to deal with a little bit of traffic and goes through. So it's McAleer still out front. Simon Clark in second. Watch for Clark, the blue and white colour scheme uh, coming through. Stuart Ings is down behind them as well, the golf livery. And Pete Morris still in third. Jonathan Evans having, again, another, another good run in this race. And uh, down the... Hanger straight comes Michael Price, who has pulled away a little bit from Andy Toon, but not a huge amount. As you can see, Andy keeping him relatively honest at the moment, but it's still Mark McAleer out front. Jonathan Evans well clear. So second in class at the moment is Andrew Mugridge, as uh, Mark McAleer goes across the line once again. And he's clear. And what's happened to Simon Clark? Simon Clark is slowing down. The second place driver, Pete Morris now, goes into second place. Simon Clark, that's the wrong time for the car to, to misfire or have a problem because he might have wanted to call in the pit lane unless he's going to try and nurse the car around. But Pete Morris, podium Pete, he was on for a podium anyway, is up into second place. It's his great friend and rival, Mark McAleer, out front at the moment. Pete Morris into second. Michael Price now goes up to third. So Michael Price heading for potentially another podium, but coming under pressure from Andy Toon, who's back into fourth place. So we were talking about Andy Toon being on for a decent result earlier on. Lost a place, but now pops back. So this will better Andy's best of the season by two places. There's Angus Archer. Angus down behind... Natalie McGloin. Natalie running in fifth position in class one. And uh, overall, and in class, on for her best result. Paul Seagrove in the 45 car is fourth in class two. And there is Pete Morris. Michael Price looking keen now. Michael maybe with the sense that he might be able to get another second position here. So was second in round 10 of the championship, this round 11. And coming into pit lane is the 23 car of Simon Clark. So is that going to be retirement or diagnostics and rejoin? Stuart Ings enjoying his race. 13th position overall. And sticks to the inside line as the class two leader goes past him. Jonathan Evans incredibly with Simon Clark coming into pit lane is fifth position overall for a class two car brilliant stuff from Jonathan Evans he's going to mirror what he did in round four on the GP circuit at Brands Hatch and that was fifth place with class win as we now see Pete Morris coming under pressure for Michael Price but it's Mark McAleer still out front at the moment didn't get his first win of the year till round five this will be win number three if he holds on to it Pete Morris is coming under pressure for Michael Price and also Andy Toon. They're going to go past Paul Seagrave who goes wide, leaves plenty of room for them. It's a three-way scrap for second position. Michael Price looks to the outside line of Pete Morris. Nothing quite doing there. Pete's not the easiest driver to overtake and he's certainly not going to make life easy for Michael Price. On board again with Pete. This is the shot we had on lap number one where we saw his teammate Chris Dyer going off into retirement. And Pete... 
still there controlling this one well. Paul Seagrave there, fourth in class two at the back of this group at the moment, but three-way scrap. Morris Price and Andy Toon on for his best result. I think this might be his best result in class one. I need to check the records on that. But he's driving a fine race being in, in with this trio for second position again. Price looks to the outside line. Managed to get round the outside of Andy Toon earlier on here at Stowe Corner. He's going for it again. He's too far back. That was uh, a mouth-watering prospect that he was going to try and go round the outside line. Angus Archer has been passed by Mark McAleer. That gives you an idea of Mark McAleer's lead. He really is storming away with this one. But uh, second position, the battle's still on now as Michael Price goes wide. This is going to allow Andy Toon the whiff of a podium here. Andy Toon putting pressure on Price. They're going on to the last lap. And Michael ran very wide there. He'll lose momentum on Pete Morris in second place. The PMC Midlands Limited car still there in second at the moment. Michael Price still consolidating third place though. Here comes Mark McAleer. Angus Archer is in behind. He's running in eighth place behind Natalie McGloin. And it looks like Mark McAleer might put a lap on uh, Natalie before the end of this one. Here's the view as they come down Hangar Straight. So lights on for the race leader. Natalie McGloin in the Stanley backed machine is still there. And Pete Morris has got clear track in front of him. I'm sure he would have liked a much closer view of Mark McAleer, to be fair. But the important thing for him is that the two cars that are behind him are just that. They're still chasing him. Natalie McGloin allows Mark McAleer through. Great driving from Natalie. And Mark McAleer is going to take the win as he exits the chicane. Third win of the season for Mark McAleer. First win since the Stetterton 300 circuit in June. McAleer takes the win. Second position will go to Pete Morris, who's clear now. Michael Price bags another podium and Andy Toon takes a superb fourth place as they go across the line. Wonderful racing from those three Class 1 cars. And here's the Class 2 winner. Fifth position outright. Best overall result jointly of the year for him. And the Class 2 win for Jonathan Evans, who crosses the line there. It's how they finish. Mark McAleer, Pete Morris and Michael Price head of Andy Toon and Jonathan Evans who wins Class 2. Andrew Muggeridge second in Class 2. Then Natalie McGloin. Class 2 podium completed by Angus Archer from Paul Seagrove and Steve Freeman. Del Brett, Ed Grimshaw, Stuart Ings and Simon Clark complete the finishers. Back up to the top step of the podium. What a brilliant race. Yeah, I, um, I mean obviously it was a shame for the you know for Mark who uh, spun on the first, first lap. Uh, but you know we'll take it anyway. You know I think we had the pace. You know we certainly had a race with him, but uh, I think we uh, we certainly had the pace for the race anyway. And for the first half of the race, you had Simon Clark behind you in the Cayman. Was he putting pressure on you? He was there or thereabouts? But did you just control the race from the front? Yeah, I mean I could see he was sort of doing similar sort of times to me. Um, so I just tried to weak it out a little bit just to get a bit of a, a, a comfort gap. Uh, and then once we got that, I just sort of backed off a little bit again. But then, of course, he disappeared as well. I don't know what happened to him. But uh, so, yeah, in the end, it ended up quite lonely. Well, after that excitingly close racing, we've got second and third in class and overall. Let's go and speak to gents. What a race. Stay in, both of you. Te teammates, 997 buddies, but what a close race. We'll start with you, Pete. I've been mean, off at the start like a scaldy cat and I thought I'm going to keep up here for the first 20, 15 minutes and then I tried to get the, as much of a gap as I could but I was never going to catch Mark because his pace is too quick but then, then uh, um, you started catching me up didn't you so Mr Price is on me yeah last three laps I had to do some blocking but good race though yeah we said qualifying was so close we always knew it was going to be tight between you two and you were really hunting down towards the end there did you try and eek past or was there any rubbing it, it wouldn't have quite been a lunge but it would i'd have definitely have had to kept my foot in longer than was comfortable knowing that pete could, he, he knew i was there yeah. but uh, i did get a run onto the uh, the, uh, the hangar in the last couple of laps so it was very tempting by then uh, the pit board had showed me i was p3 with the goings on ahead and uh, p2 would be lovely of course but uh, a podium is a treat all the same so jonathan we see you at the top step of class two again that's more like it yeah uh we didn't have a mechanical, so that was good, and uh, yeah, managed to managed to hold it together. Bit of a bit of a hairy moment on the first lap, and then uh, yeah, and just pulled a pulled a half decent lead out, and then just managed it for the rest of the race with really. him. I was going to say Andrew Mugridge behind you, another podium for him. You were managing the gap for about it's about ten seconds for the whole race. It eked a little bit further away, so it just felt like you were in control. Is that how it was in the car? Yeah, I, I just tried to pick a point on the circuit where I knew where he was, and. Um, 
and uh, as long as he didn't come round uh, round the corner before I got to the bridge, I knew I knew I was all right. Um, so that that was a strategy, and it I think it I think it worked quite well. Hopefully, it's um, done the tyres a little bit of good for the next race. Andrew, you did take that step up the grid and so you started third, finished second and you had a bit of a lonely race out there, there was no one really chasing you, so a good solid second. Yeah, thank you very much, got off to a good start, uh, nearly got involved in the frac car on the first corner but managed to uh, dodge that, but lost a couple of places, so sort of uh, scrabbled my way back up and uh, it's a good race, yeah, a bit lonely at times but I, could, uh, I was reeling in Mr Evans slowly, um, another 10 laps and a slightly longer bonnet, I might get him, but um, a great race, nice and clean and uh, lots of fun. So Angus, brilliant race, I know you started second and you came third, but actually you were battling throughout that race. Uh, yeah, I mean to be honest with you, the start was a bit chaotic, cars seemed to go everywhere, the class one guys just went everywhere. Um, and I sort of went through and I came out second and had a bit of a lead to be honest with you, over thirds. But um, going down the back straight twice, had a problem with the fourth gear, went in, jumped straight out and before I knew it, Andrew just came bombing past me and that was basically the race, sat behind him. Okay, so then what can we do to the car now in the meantime? We've got a little bit of a gap before race two. Are there any changes you can make to try and eliminate that problem? Uh, no, unfortunately not. It's the gearbox, I think, is an issue internally. I haven't got a spare, I haven't got time anyway. So I think I learned to drive around it. If you put it in a certain way, you know, it's, 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 it's what we got. So we'll try our, try our luck, see how we get on. Mark, we're at the end of race one. It's not gone to plan, but you've pulled position for two races. So what happened in race one from your side? Well, only about 300 metres from my, my side. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, just annoying. You know, it was uh, pole positions on the left, which doesn't really make sense to us all, but it is where it is and they're not going to move it. Um, so, you know, I, I thought I might be second into the first corner, which I was and reasonably happy halfway through the first corner and then I just got harpooned and spun round and that was the end of my race. Managed to make it back to the pits but obviously it was irreparable for the rest of race one. Yeah, I mean, it had a puncture, the, the suspension was bent, the steering, you know, going down the straight, the steering was half a turn to the left so it, we, we weren't going to get back out for that race but the guys have fixed it, we've had the spare parts, we've got a new tyre and hopefully we're going to you know, try hard to win the next race. You had a brilliant Donington with a double pole position, double race win and a fastest lap. That's a really good points haul for today. We are talking about drop rounds. How will that affect your championship overall? Uh, well, I've dropped my two rounds now because I've had two non-finishes. Both have been here actually. But uh, So we've just got to make the next three rounds count. So Andy, we are gridding up for race two. How was race one for you? Race one was really good. Um, yeah, uh, on on the pace, and there was a little bit of a little bit of um, a coming together with you at the start, but um, half the job is avoiding that, and then it's 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 making the most of, of the race. Had a good battle with obviously Pete, as myself and and Mike, and um, we were keeping each other honest all the way through. Yeah, there was there was nothing between us, so it was nice. It was really exciting to watch. Every time you were going past, it was one or the other was trying to make a dive, a lunge up the inside, but all fair racing. Yeah, and that's the main thing. I think we all got out of the cars afterwards and said, "Great, great racing, but but nice and fair." You know, no one made any any duff lunges, and we we're all looking for the opportunities. But but yeah, we kept it kept it safe. And for the three of us, after 25 minutes, I think to cross the line, you know, something like quarter of a second apart or something. Yeah, that's that's what you want. It's a new track to everyone. It's the international circuit. Have you been finding it? Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Obviously, first time out on this new layout for me. Uh, Really difficult testing yesterday. We had so much standing water. We couldn't get any real practicing in to be uh, to, to test either myself or the car. Totally different today. Warm, slicks. It's fast. The car felt better. I felt better. The traction was there. The speed felt better. But I just couldn't quite hold it all together. So it sounds like your confidence is growing with the car and the track. It just needs to come all together in race two. Yeah, I think so. All I need to do is get that jigsaw all pieced together. Try and make something from it. race two here at Silverstone on the international circuit. 
There was some really tight racing in race one, so we are set for great racing action in race number two. Mark Sumter gets a second go at things. Mark McAleer alongside Simon Clark and Chris Dyer, row two from Michael Price and Pete Morris. Andy Toon and then class two pole man Jonathan Evans, eighth on the grid. Andrew Muggeridge, head of Steve Freeman. Natalie McLoyne and Angus Archer, row six. Paul Seagrave and Ed Grimshaw, followed by Del Brett and Stuart Ings. Lights out, and away we go. Simon Clark did not take third place on the grid. Gearbox issues for him in race number one. I understand he is going to start the race. It looks like a pit start for him, but it's the two marks, Sumter and McAleer side by side. Sumter with his nose in front at the moment. And thankfully for him, a less eventful start, having been harpooned in his own words at race number one. On board with Steve Freeman. Steve being passed around the outside by Natalie McGloin. Andrew Muggridge looking for the class lead from Jonathan Evans, which he has at the moment, but Evans will grab the inside line as they come on to hang a straight. So Muggridge down into second, then Natalie McGloin in class one, but it's Mark Sub to the race leader. Mark McAleer second coming under pressure here from Chris Dyer on the outside. And Michael Price is going for a chase round the outside as well. Then we've got Pete Morris followed by Andy Toon. Jonathan Evans has made a good start. Rounds on the outside line of Natalie McGloin to try and get a class one car between himself and his class two chasers. So it's some to leading from McAleer, Dyer and Price. Morris and Toon in behind. I'm pretty sure that was Andy Toon's best finish in, uh, in overall in uh, Andy class one. His previous best, I think, was a brace of seventh and a sixth position in the first meeting at Brands Hatch last year. I was talking about Simon Clark. The DW reporting car is going. And uh, hopefully they'll have maybe got some of the gearbox issues sorted out. And it looks like he's already up for playing with some of those Class 2 cars. So we wish Simon Clark well for this race. Had the fastest lap in race number one as well. So Andy Toon, who we were talking about earlier on in the four-car chasing... Pete Morris, who is the second of the 997s, Michael Price the leading 997 at the moment, so it's the brace of 996s with championship leader Mark Sumter, 39 point championship lead now I think on total scores, again that's by my maths uh, between races, we'll get official confirmation from the championship itself at the end of the day, but uh, mid-meeting have to do my own sums. So 340 points playing 301 for Simon Clark. It's likely to be extended here. Chris Dyer's still third, but Mark McAleer has closed down on Chris Dyer to just four points now in this championship. And again, we're we're ignoring the drop scores on, on that because it really gets far too complicated because drivers could wind up dropping the score from the last round, the Porsche Festival at Brands Hatch. So uh, class two, Jonathan Evans, 340 points. Steve Freeman on 252 and Andrew Muggeridge now on 248 four points behind we go on board with Steve Freeman and not that far away from Andrew Muggeridge at the moment so that keeping second position on total points alive for him just now Natalie McGloin is immediately in front Angus Archer great result for him with third place in class in race number one and I think enjoying his Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli Racing. Through shot goes Jonathan Evans, the class leader. So second place in class is Andrew Muggridge. Then Steve Freeman, Angus Archer and Paul Seagrave in red. But it's Mark Sumter still out front from Mark McAleer. Race settling down nicely now. Natalie still keeping ahead of the second place car in class two. It's Andrew Muggeridge. Andrew only 17 points ahead of Ed Grimshaw in the uh, championship at the moment. So Grimshaw could possibly close up before the end of the year. And we'll have a good hard look at the points as we leave Silverstone to work out who's where and who needs to do what in that last meeting at Brands Hatch. Last year we wound up at Castle Coombe, which was a great end to last year's championship. So back with Natalie dicing hard here with Andrew Muggeridge who looks on the inside line and we've got Angus Archer about to effect a pass as well. Angus Archer challenging for third behind that group. So watch for Archer, the 
white car with the dark blue bonnet and the uh, yellowed headlamps looking down the inside line at the moment of Steve Freeman. So he's got the inside line here as they come down into Stowe. Paul Seagrave not that far behind as well. This is a good line here from Steve Freeman around the outside. Is he going to do a Michael Price here and hold on to position with the outside line? He can't quite do it. And Angus Archer makes up a position. Lovely watching the speed. So much to watch with these onboards now and all the telemetry that you get through that of the speeds that the cars achieve around the track. And Angus Archer now not that far away from Andrew Muggeridge. As Steve Freeman comes under pressure from Paul Seagrave, who finished ahead of him in race number one. So those two continuing their battle. And then Simon Clark is in behind, beginning to close up. Now, if he's got gearbox issues, that might hamper his progress through what is a fairly busy piece of traffic at the moment. Mark McAleer trying to close down, though, on Mark Sumter. McAleer very nearly back up into the top three of the championship. And if he can pull a few more points over Chris Dyer in this one, then he might be able to do that. But he made up a lot of points by virtue of Chris Dyer's non-finish. Dyer picking up 10 points for his trouble for entry into the meeting and starting and this is a handy battle for the lead going on now with Sumter coming under big pressure here from McAleer technically you'd say Mark McAleer is the more warmed up of the two drivers because he not only won race one but had had it as a workout an extra practice isn't it if you get if you've got the laps in Chris Dyer still up ahead of Michael Price and leading class two once again Jonathan Evans the championship leader will extend the lead again Jonathan, as we said, had a 78-point lead coming into the uh, into the uh, weekend. And must be thinking about wrapping up the Class 2 title now. The overall title, of course, will depend on how he and Mark Sumter to do. I think they're both tied on points now by my maths. But again, that's subject to confirmation in terms of the overall championship. The overall title will undoubtedly go to Brands Hatch in September, which is great for our spectators. There as we ride on board with Pete Morris, busy chasing Michael Price with Andy Toon still running in sixth place there Jonathan Evans the next car we will see is the lead class two car but the race leaders getting into traffic and that's Ed Grimshaw that Mark Sumter's closing up on goes down on the inside line Mike, Mike, Mark McAleer absolutely harrying him and battling hard for the lead here in round 12 of the championship at Silverstone Chris Dyer heading this group down, he's in third place, but a big battle on for fourth position with Pete Morris trying to get the better of Michael Price. Coming up into the mix as well is Andy Toon. Here's the view from Pete coming through this complex at the end of the International Pit Straight as they head towards the Hangar Straight. And Pete working hard, as he has done all year, took the race win, remember, on the GP circuit here round six race two of the our third meeting of the season and he's working hard Mark McAleer was closer to Mark Sumter earlier on but it's Sumter who still holds the lead looking for win number seven of the season Mark McAleer looking for race win number four Morris may be dropping back a little bit at the moment from Michael Price who has a bit of breathing space but it's Mark Sumter still out front Paragon, Bayliss and Harding sponsored car ahead of RVR Machine. There is Natalie McGloin ahead of these guys. Coming down the international pit straight once again. So Mark Sumter from Mark McAleer. Michael Price still ahead of Pete Morris and looking relatively comfortable in fourth place at the minute. Chris Dyer looking to bag a third podium of the year. Hesitated saying that because I had to look down at the records and somehow thought he'd had more than that. But... Nice to see Chris Dyer's car in fine fettle after his uh, problems in race number one. Second meeting on the bounce, he's tagged somebody because he had a little bit of contact with Pete Morris going into Redgate during that um, wet race at Donington Park, race one at Donington. As the battle for the lead heads down Hanger Straight and through Stowe Corner once again, Sumter still there, closing down on Natalie McGloin. And car spun out there is Paul Seagrave. Paul has got going again 
They both passed Natalie McLeod, the leaders. Let's have a look. Background, yeah, Paul Seagrove running slowly, but a little bit further back than he would like to be. That's going to free up Steve Freeman for fourth place because Paul Seagrove was fourth in class two in race number one. And he's got an awful lot of work to do to try and close down on that. But um, Mark Sumter still out front here. If anything, building a little bit of a lead now over Mark McAleer. And again, here's the focus on the battle for fourth place. We've still got Chris Dyer running in third and completing the podium. Chris Dyer about to pass Natalie McGloin down the straight, which he does. Michael Price is next up. Progress here for the 23 car of Simon Clark, who now passes Andrew Muggeridge. So Simon inside the top 10 from the back of the grid will be pleased with his progress. I think pleased that he did actually take the start. Ed Grimshaw in class two, about to be passed by Jonathan Evans, who's still running in seventh position overall. And then Simon Clark being kept honest at the moment by Andrew Muggeridge, who is still second in class. Ed Grimshaw in his Strasser machine. Ed's running in sixth place, 14th overall at the moment. And back to the race lead. Mark Sumter continues to pull away from Mark McAleer. He's looking very handy in this one, but Michael Price under a lot of pressure. And well, the last two rounds, we've seen Michael Price as being perhaps the faster of the drivers when he's been in a battle but here he's, he's not holding them up but he's certainly coming under pressure from both Pete Morris and Andy Toon and Pete Morris is a feisty driver and will maybe look at the inside no it's not Morris looking at the inside line it's Andy Toon who wants to get up and bag another decent position he's a little bit far away from getting a, a first podium in Porsche Club Racing first outright podium we should say remember Andy the outright champion in 2016 when he won class two so Morris working hard and Price being given a good old workout here. We're into the second half of this race and now it's Pete Morris's turn to, to get the attention of Andy Toon. So whether there'll be any team orders between the two to maybe sort themselves out, try and catch Michael Price first is another matter as Simon Clark comes through on the inside line, passes Andrew Muggeridge. So class one car admittedly with gearbox problems passing class two machine this class two car has no problems at all Jonathan Evans still leading class but the key thing here is that we can see Andrew Muggeridge within arm's reach of the class leader and he's still got a few laps to go it's a decent lead by Jonathan Evans but it's not as big as we've seen at other rounds so Andrew Muggeridge perhaps gaining in confidence at another race podium in race number one here and uh, looking looking good in this race at the moment. Here's Simon Clark still continuing his travels through the grid. It's going to be valuable points. Now remember the, the reason that Simon would have wanted to start the race is, is championship points. He's on 301, Chris Dyer on 278, Mark McAleer on 274. And a big sideways moment in front of him. Andrew Muggeridge has a big moment. We were saying about Andrew being closer to the class leader and very nearly throws away second position in class. He's got going again, such was his lead over the third place man in class, Angus Archer, that he was able to get going again after that problem and reclaim second place. But, and now we, you could almost say we've got the customary gap back from, John, uh, from Jonathan Evans to second position in class. Stuart Ings still running well. He's in 15th place, so another strong drive from Stuart Ings, but it's Mark Sumter out front from Mark McAleer, and it's getting closer for third place. Michael Price has worked hard and is closing down on Chris Dyer. The cars you're looking at, Chris Dyer at the front of this group. Then Michael Price, the green car we're looking at through the screen of Pete Morris's car. And Pete running in fifth place with Andy Toon in behind. Here come the leaders working through traffic. Stuart Ings is passed by the leader, Mark Sumter, Mark McAleer will follow through. Mark, I don't think in with a shout of taking the win this time, but he won't be too displeased with a win and a second place this weekend. Chris Dyer is behind him though, immediately behind him, so that's going to make things tight on championship points between those two going into the last round at Brands Hatch. But we watch for Mark Sumter 
to bag another win here at Silverstone. There's the chequered flag. Mark Sumter wins round 12 of the championship. Mark Sumter in second. Third place is still at the moment with Chris Dyer, but Mark Sumter absolutely delighted with that. A dismal start to the race meeting for him with that contact. Angus Archer going across the line. He's third in class, a classified third in class in class two. And here comes the battle for third overall. It is Chris Dyer that takes it. Michael Price in fourth, Peter Morris fifth, and Andy Toon, another great result for him in sixth place. Class two, seventh overall this time is Jonathan Evans. Well clear still of Ang Andrew Muggeridge with Angus Archer third in class as we saw. And Jonathan comes down into the S's for the last time and will extend the championship lead. He'll go on to 373. He's very nearly 100 points clear of Steve Freeman on, on uh, total points with this win. Here he comes across the line. Jonathan Evans takes the checker. And another win to add to his collection. The two winners then, Mark Sumter and Jonathan Evans. Here comes Andrew Muggeridge. He finishes in second position in Class 2. As we said, Angus Archer completing that podium. Here's the result. Sumter from McAleer. Chris Dyer third from Michael Price and Pete Morris. And Andy Two, Jonathan Evans, Class 2 winner from Simon Clark. Andrew Muggeridge and Angus Archer completed the top 10 from Steve Freeman and Natalie McLoyd, then Paul Seagrave, Ed Grimshaw, Stuart Ings and Del Brett. Fastest lap, Mark McAleer. Congratulations, an overall race win from pole position that's put right this morning. It's some good points and it was a fantastic race, which is the most important thing. That's what we're here for. You know, did, uh, he, Mark really made me work for it. Mark, first time at the International Circuit at Silverstone. You've had a double podium with a race win in race one this morning and second place after a fearsome battle throughout that race two. Yeah, that was a fantastic battle. It was totally the opposite to race one. Um, we obviously it was just sort of like to keep my head down and keep going. That one was just absolutely full on. It was a great race, really enjoyed it. Um, we were both just 10 tenths all the way around really. Uh, got slowed up a little bit back, past lapping some cars at the end, which sort of took the, blunted the charge, shall we say. Uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Chris, how was your race? Got a good start. Managed to gap Michael Price a bit. And uh, then he, my tyres sort of went off a little bit cause from my first race, that when I only went first corner. Just kept a nice gap between me and Michael Price, and he kept reeling me in a bit. So bit of damage limitation from this morning. Jonathan, a great day for you. Another Class 2 victory to add to your Class 2 victory this morning. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I, I made a bit of hard work of it. It was, um, yeah, it was it was a struggle. For some reason, the car just lost the pace between qualifying and now. Um, but yeah, win's a win, I guess. And uh, yeah, nice to, nice to go home with two. Do you think about the championship now? It's because obviously Mark Sumter's had a race win this afternoon, but a, a DNF this morning. So it's all topsy-turvy yet again. I've got absolutely no idea. Um, no, I don't know. We were, I think we were leading and then I think Mark was leading. Just try and, you know, enjoy the racing, win as many as I can. Uh, and if that gives us a championship, then great. If it doesn't, then we've had a nice time anyway. Andrew, are you happy with your weekend? Another podium? Yeah, really, really pleased. Had a great race, got to a good start. Um, got involved in a bit, of, a bit of traffic, which allowed Jonathan to, to pull forward a little bit. Um, but I was, I was uh, getting closer towards the end, but uh, a little spin in the chicane didn't uh, help, help matters much. But overall, a great race. The car's been fantastic and, uh, yeah, a really, a really good battle. Angus, another podium this afternoon in race two. How was that race for you? Yeah, it's great, thanks. We got off the line well. A um, lot less drama at the first corner. Everyone was a bit clean and got round this time. Um, I started a bit further back than I did in race one and had to find my way back up a little bit. But yeah, great, thank you. Yeah. Will we see you at Brands? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll be at, I'll be at Brands. Um, it's Porsche Festival, so you know, what's not to love? It'll be a great weekend. Mark Sumter leads Class 1 from Simon Clark and Chris Dyer. Mark McAleer next up, tied with Dyer in third place. Then Pete Morris and Michael Price. James Birch next from Craig Wilkins, Andy Two. Natalie McGloin completes the top 10. Then Peter Ursek, Kevin Harrison, Steve Cheatham, Tom Bradshaw, Kareem Moody, Mike Johnson, Nigel Young. In Class 2, Jonathan Evans is a point shy of Mark Sumter, but he leads Class 2 from Steve Freeman, Andrew Muggeridge, Ed Grimshaw, Paul Seagrave and Trevor Lewis. 
So that's it here for Silverstone. We've had some brilliant racing action. Please do join us again in three weeks' time for the Festival of Porsche at Brands Hatch.